So I think you all are doing a wonderful job today. It is really impressive. Um, I want you to put that toy away or I'll have to take it from you. No response? Where do you think I am? Another viral TikTok trend going in the wrong direction. It's happening in our local schools. So this trend, you might have heard of it. It's called Devious Devious. The Devious Devious Slicks Challenge. Students have been recording themselves vandalizing and stealing school property. And for now, at least two of the boys' restrooms here are out of service. Disciplinary action has and will be taken against those who participate. And also, school uh, campus police will be contacted. So again, a conversation to have with your student as you head out the door and drop them off to school. Reporting live in North Las Vegas, Beyond the is now. On Tuesday, the Amherst Regional School Committee voted unanimously to mandate COVID-19 vaccinations for all Amherst Regional students. Students will be required to receive an FDA-approved COVID-19 vaccination by December 1st to continue attending classes. In other news, unofficial results from the City Clerk's Office show that City Council President Gina Luiz Schiara earned 60.8% of the total vote for mayor in Tuesday's preliminary election, while transportation analyst Mark Warner took second place with 21.8%. Skiara and Warner will face off to replace Mayor David Narkowitz on November 2nd. Hundreds of people are expected to rally on Main Street in Northampton on Saturday in defense of reproductive rights. After the march, attendees will hear from 11 speakers at City Hall including local politicians, physicians, professors, and high school students. I'm Shiloh Hammerland, and thank you for watching. The 2021 school year started with several significant challenges for students, faculty, and staff as they navigated new schedules and policies. While COVID has been on the forefront of those directives, one other change has significantly impacted student time on learning. The school's late start has made early dismissals for student athletes a routine occurrence for many students and teachers. We sat down with our athletic director, David Pruhl, to get some detailed statistics on these early dismissals and spoke to teachers and student athletes to understand how this practice affects life at NHS. Football uh, with one game a week and playing at night hasn't really had to deal with the early dismissals as the other fall teams have, but boys and girls cross country, boys and girls soccer, golf in field hockey. Uh, there's roughly you know, 184 student athletes um, that are affected by the, the school change and the early dismissals. Um, there's been, among those teams, there, there has been or will be throughout the fall, uh, 56 total early dismissals. 18 of those are for home contests, for field hockey, and for golf. Uh, and because of the time that teams are leaving, uh, there's 24 
times where teams are being dismissed from their third period class in addition to missing their entire fourth period class. This season, the golf team has a total of 17 early dismissals. As a student athlete, do you feel that the early dismissals have affected your ability to learn? I think that missing school almost every day during some weeks, some weeks every day, uh, certainly has uh, an impact on uh, my schoolwork and my ability to learn. Do you feel that it is your responsibility as a student athlete to balance academics and athletics? No, it should be like balanced on its own and we shouldn't have to miss school for our sports. I feel like it's been on us to be the ones to balance it, but it really shouldn't be. That's not our job as a student, even if sometimes it should be, it's just too much stress for us. Out of a class of 30 people, um, the other day I had 13. Uh, there's a lot of people missing and when you have that amount of your class missing, the content that you teach you're either going to have to reteach it or you're going to have to water it down and make it so you can catch everybody up. And it's, it's super difficult. So it's definitely a challenge. Do you have any other thoughts or possible solutions? I mean, my, my initial thought is putting flex at the end of the day. So if you know students are missing their fourth period class, they'll only miss a portion of it. And then they would just be missing flex where they could, on the days that they're there, they could make up that in flex. So I feel like that could be a potential solution and I feel like I would be a lot more comfortable if flex was at the end of the day to minimize the amount of uh, instruction students missed. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. Tune in next week for more. Hi, my name is Nate Kidd and tonight we're going to be exploring Florence Night Out. After last year's cancellation, the event is back on this Saturday. Tonight we're going to be exploring what local vendors have to offer, local artists and live music. How do events like Florence Night Out benefit local artists? Well, it's a wonderful opportunity to engage with the public and <clears throat> to introduce your work. I mean, for me, it's not about selling as opposed to meeting people, creating opportunities, looking for collaborations. It brings exposure to our work, a small town like this. It brings a lot of people from out of town here and um, they get to see what we have to offer. So how do you feel events like these impact our local community? I think it's really important because people have been so isolated in the pandemic to have opportunities to gather. I think it brings our community together, which is great, obviously, and I don't know, more opportunity to make friends, I guess. Yeah, I mean, these events are great, especially at this time, because it brings people out, it brings the community out, and we can... Uh, congregate and meet with each other. You know, there's a bunch of different independent businesses and local artists, and it really brings the community get, get together because that's what we need, especially now. That concludes our Florence Night Out. It was great seeing everyone out here tonight. Thanks for watching. On September 19th, a large protest was held by students at UMass outside the Theta Chi fraternity over allegations of sexual assault against its members. The protests, which have now carried into the second week, have fueled emotional responses by members of the university's body. The initial night of protests resulted in vandalized cars, smashed windows, and two individuals were arrested on charges of disorderly conduct, inciting a riot, and failure to not disperse from a riot. While no formal complaint has been filed at this time, Chancellor Subhaswamy emailed the student body on September 20th, saying, Allegations of this kind and the impassionated response of our community remind us of the work that we must do to change the culture here on campus and in society more broadly. The violence exhibited yesterday by some in the crowd, however, is not the answer. When we reached out to the UMass police chief and to the chancellor for an interview, they declined, though both released an official statement regarding the issue. We talked to NHS teachers who are alumni of UMass Amherst to hear their experience with, with sexual assault while attending. There wasn't a lot of protection. Every once in a while there'd be an incident and they put up more lights or recommend that women walk together at night, um, but nothing, nothing tangible. Yeah, unfortunately, it really, I'm really surprised because I thought when I was there in 1983 that we were making progress. I thought things were consistently getting better. And it's not. It hasn't. Um, there may be more awareness of the different genres of sexual assault, but it's still happening. It's not really, there's no active prevention. So when I first started at UMass, there were specific frats that were known and advertised to freshman girls as like no-go places. I hope that the future of all Greek life on campus is one that promotes
inclusion and safety for all people involved, both in the frat and any sort of events that they might hold. Um, I believe that people need to be held accountable for their actions and that due process is is a right to all people on the UMass campus. Chancellor Subaswamy has stated that if a witness or victim comes forward, the offending party will be held fully accountable while also reminding students that violent protests are not the answer. Frustration has recently shifted onto the Dean of Students because of their inaction regarding the situation as students continue to protest. On September 28th, the National Theta Chi Fraternity asked UMass Amherst to support them as the story continues to unfold. Thanks for watching. Levi! Hey, we're here. Uh, we're here. So here's what I'm thinking we do for our. No, what are you wearing? What, what are, are you, you wearing? What are you talking about? I'm just wearing my Noah, sweat. we dress up for this segment. Do you see what I'm wearing? You're wearing your sweats! I know, this is my favorite sweatshirt, okay? No, the point is that we like to dress up and we get classy and we get fun. What are you wearing? I'm wearing my favorite sweatshirt because it's Monday and I'm tired! So shut up! Ever since the start of production of vaccine doses, there has been a debate about whether or not to give extra doses to other countries in need, or keep them for the safety of the American population. Last Wednesday, President Biden doubled the purchase of Pfizer vaccine doses to share with other countries to one billion doses. However, another event occurred last Wednesday. People 65 and older who have gotten the Pfizer vaccine have been approved to get booster shots. These two coronavirus events have caused a conflict in production, and many Americans are demanding the U.S. prioritizes its citizens' safety. So if these booster shots were approved, how do you think they would help the vaccination rate in America? I think, you know, as we start to understand more and more about the science and people feeling comfortable, the more people that get more shots are going to make people that haven't had it yet feel like, okay, all these people are getting it and things are going well for them, so maybe I should do it. So I think, again, it's about, as we always say, following the science and uh, having the chance to really, um, you know, get ourselves in a position where we're not going to get sick. Whoever needs it, I mean, if it is a global, um, a, a global problem that has to be addressed globally. So help with whenever, if we have the availability and the, um, the product, then we should um, circulate it. While some Americans are waiting patiently for the booster shot to come available to them, others are getting anxious about when they can get their shot, especially those with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Scientists are noting that the J&J &J effectiveness is down to 71%, the lowest of all three. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week.